Love it or hate it, there's never been a film quite like Space Jam A New Legacy. Set in the Warner Brothers serververse, it's packed with references that will go over the heads of younger viewers. These are the things only adults will notice in Space Jam A New Legacy. Sure, LeBron James has his name above the Space Jam sequel's title, much like Michael Jordan did in the original Space Jam. But also like that 1996 film, the villain team is composed of mutated versions of basketball superstars. This time around, rather than the Monstars, we get the Goon Squad. This team includes both NBA and WNBA star players, but with some significant upgrades. Okay, let's analyze the competition. Clay Thompson becomes Wet Fire, a goon who has aquakinesis, the ability to control water, and pyrokinesis, the ability to manipulate fire. The nature of the character is a reference to the Splash Brothers, a moniker given to Thompson and Stephen Curry because of their ability to splash the ball with three-point shots, and a riff on the old Bash Brothers nickname bestowed upon 80s baseball superstars Jose Canseco and Mark McGuire. Anthony Davis is the Brow, a winged creature with a unibrow, also based on a real nickname. Davis has gained notoriety not only for his skills on the court, but for, well, his unibrow. Diana Taurasi appears as White Mamba, a snake-like being. The character name is a reference to one the late Kobe Bryant bestowed upon her years ago, praising her skills on the court by riffing off his own Black Mamba moniker. Damian Lillard becomes Kronos, perhaps the most powerful Powerful of the Goon Squad. He's basically an android who can speed up and slow down time to his liking. The character's inspiration comes from Dame Time, a phrase that has followed Lillard since he was 13, referring to his ability to stay calm under pressure and seemingly control time as he casually blows past the competition. Finally, WNBA Sparks Forward, Neka Ogumike is the scary Arachnica, a spider-like goon with six arms. There are a ton of jokes in Legacy about LeBron's near-constant movement from one basketball team to the next. Since his 2003 debut, despite being a four-time Most Valuable Player and 17-time All-Star, he has played for the Cleveland Cavaliers, the Miami Heat, the Cleveland Cavaliers again, and now the Los Angeles Lakers, who, as Don Cheadle's algae rhythm jokes, better not get too used to him. Bugs' chosen nickname for King James is Cleveland, not only a reference to his Ohio upbringing, but also the city that is loved and hated and loved and hated him as he has come and gone over the years. The funny thing is, at one time, LeBron planned to use a legacy announcement to break Cleveland's heart once again. In 2018, as the world waited to see where the free agent would land next, a teaser trailer was prepared that reportedly had the Looney Tunes character stealing sports memorabilia, with LeBron retrieving the memorabilia and then appearing in full Lakers gear. It would have served the dual purpose of teasing the film and announcing James' new home, but was ultimately scuttled at the last minute. There's a good chance your child may have seen the original Space Jam, and if so, there's also a good chance they remember the name Michael Jordan. That would help with the funniest scene of a new legacy, when Sylvester the Cat announces at halftime that the lopsided score is okay because he just found another basketball great to join the team, none other than Michael Jordan. After watching the lower half of a mysterious figure enter the room to great anticipation, the reveal is that the Toons have accidentally recruited Michael B. Jordan, the actor to help out. He looks confused, a lot of popcorn gets tossed around, and then he heads back to his seat to watch the conclusion of the game. It's a funny joke, but you can already imagine parents all over the world saying, you know, from Black Panther, the Creed movies, um, Fantastic Four. Oh well, someday they'll grow up and find it really funny. Early in the film, we flash back to Ohio in the 90s when a young LeBron learns the value of hard work on the court and of not wasting his time on video games. It's a cruel lesson, but one with a basis in reality. In real life, the now primitive-looking but beloved at the time Game Boy was all the rage from its introduction in 1989 until the late 90s. The game we see LeBron playing is 1990's Bugs Bunny Crazy Castle, which featured the titular Looney Tunes scampering up ladders and being sucked through tunnels Mario-style while grabbing carrots and avoiding baddies. Decades later, perhaps basketball fans can be thankful that LeBron put away his childish things. But still, tossing a Game Boy in the trash? In the 90s, such behavior would have been viewed by most kids as nothing short of a criminal act. 
If you see Legacy with a child, don't be surprised if they have lots of questions about all the characters in the background. As Al G. Rhythm explains, the crowd for the big basketball game is made up of half everyday people sucked into the serververse by LeBron James' social media, and half iconic Warner Brothers characters who make up their own WB universe. The result is one of the coolest things about the movie, if admittedly done before in movies and TV shows like Ready Player One and South Park's Imagination Land trilogy. Count Chocula, Cinderella, Snarf from Thundercats. The background of the final act is populated by characters from The Wizard of Oz, Game of Thrones, and even the violent droogs from A Clockwork Orange. If your kid catches the reference to the nun from Ken Russell's 1971 trippy 17th century nightmare flick, The Devils, well, consider us impressed. There are also lots of WB cartoon characters in the background of those basketball game scenes, so kids should have no problem identifying them, right? Think again. It seems highly unlikely that a kid in the year 2021 is going to geek out over the Herculoids, but protoplasmic creatures Gloop and Gleep from the 1967 series are right there, cheering on the Toon Squad in multiple scenes. Peter Potamus can be seen floating above the court in his magic flying balloon, flanked by the likes of Space Ghost, Jabberjaw, The Great Gazoo, Megilla Gorilla, Captain Caveman, and others that kids most likely won't recognize unless they're allowed to watch Adult Swim. If they're hip, they might recognize Rick and Morty. If they watched the 2020 Animaniacs reboot on Hulu, they might be delighted to spot Yakko, Wacko, and Dot hanging around. But if they don't recognize the Scooby-Doo gang and their mystery machine, well, it sounds like your family has some cartoons to watch. One fun element of Legacy is that Bugs and LeBron must put together their team by roaming the serververse, finding Looney Tunes characters who reside on planets themed around classic WB movies. To an adult, it's a fun detour. To a kid, some explanation may be required. The duo visit a DC-themed planet, where Superman and other Justice League heroes are glimpsed as Daffy Duck and Porky Pig are recruited. Most kids, one would think, would understand those references. After that, however, they enter the two 2015 blockbuster Mad Max Fury Road, which earned a hard R rating and most likely isn't in the Saturday morning rotation for kids. The recruitment team also travels to a black and white Casablanca world, where Play It Again Sam takes on a whole new meaning. Although a cartoon Humphrey Bogart appeared alongside Bugs in 8 Ball Bunny, the legendary actor doesn't appear in this version. While seeing such prominent recognition of the 1942 movie is wonderful, the scene might soar over the heads of kids, like LeBron going for a dunk. Perhaps most enjoyable is a visit to a Matrix planet, where Granny and Tweety have become a couple of bullet-dodging badasses. Then there's the Austin Powers planet, where Elmer Fudd has become a mini-me of Dr. Evil and poor Sylvester has been shaven to become the villain's new hairless pet cat. As an adult, you might be jazzed to spot Wood Harris, aka Avon Barksdale, from The Wire, playing LeBron's no-nonsense childhood coach. But chances are the children in your life will be much more preoccupied looking for Taz. Other adult-friendly cameos in Legacy include Sarah Silverman, stifling her famously foul mouth temporarily to portray a duplicitous WB executive. Alongside Silverman is recent Oscar nominee Steven Yeun. As another eager exec, LeBron's wife is played by by Star Trek and Walking Dead series vet, Sinequa Martin-Green. Then there are the basketball game announcers, sucked in via their phones and told that unless the Toon Squad wins, they'll become stuck in the serververse forever. The guy in the bow tie is smooth-voiced sportscaster Ernie Johnson, and to his left is Lil Rel Howery, a funny supporting actor perhaps best known for Get Out. Also worth mentioning is Zendaya as the new voice of Lola Bunny, and funny man Gabriel Iglesias vocalizing Speedy Gonzales. Adult and child fans of the classic Looney Tunes cartoons alike will be rewarded for their hours spent before the boob tube, as certain moments in Legacy recall classic shorts. When LeBron first encounters Bugs Bunny, the wascally wabbit shoves a hunter's cap and a shotgun onto the basketball star, insisting that he act out a scene. LeBron goes through a few physical transformations as he becomes a cartoon, one resembling the early version of Elmer Fudd seen in cartoons like 1942's The Wacky Wabbit. 
Bugs and LeBron also keep tearing rabbit season and duck season signs off the tree, recreating one of the most iconic cartoon sequences ever committed to film, the Bugs and Daffy square off in 1951's Rabbit Fire. While LeBron attempts to explain his dilemma to Bugs, his son Dom has been kidnapped by Algae Rhythm and he needs to recruit a basketball team to get him back. Bugs puts the basketball star through a series of torturous cartoon moments. Perhaps the most recognizable is the barbershop sequence from 1950's The Rabbit of Seville, with Bugs shaving and spinning his unwitting victim in a barber chair. Lots of other classic Looney Tunes bits are littered throughout the film, from Marvin the Martian's You've Made Me Very Angry to Wile E. Coyote's backfiring Acme products. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite summer blockbusters are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.